This tutorial will show you how to create a custom points based analytic rubric. This means that the point values are different for each level and criteria. This is a type of rubric you would use if you didn't want to have the same points across all the criteria. So if one of the criteria is going to be kind of weighted higher or more than another criteria, uh, then this is the kind of rubric that you would use. So I'm going to click on the edit course on the nav bar and I'm going to click on rubrics. Now you should remember that you should have your rubric mapped out completely before you get to this next stage. What do I mean by that? Well here I'm bringing up Word and you'll see that I have my rubric. This is just for an English composition paper. I have my levels laid out so I know there are four levels or five levels and there are four criteria. The overall score is not part of the criteria, but that's also good to have in there so I know if a student gets everything in this level, what would be their score. In this particular case, this is a 100 point assignment. Now with the custom, a custom points gradebook, as I lay out my rubric, I also want to lay out the scores for each of the various criteria in each of the levels. So you'll notice that the um, organization and style and mechanics is much more important than the ideas in this particular thing and you'll see how the points go down for each one until you get down to the, it's not present that's just a zero. So make sure you have this all laid out before we get to this next step. So the next step I'm going to go ahead and click on new rubric. I'm going to go ahead and give the rubric a name. I'm going to choose the rubric status. In this particular case, you're going to keep it as draft as you create the rubric. You can put a description in the rubric if you for the rubric if you wish. It doesn't show up for the student. I'm going to choose analytic and I'm going to put in the number of levels and the number of criteria. Remember that I since I have it fully mapped out, I know that there are five levels and four criteria. So having it mapped out makes it much easier than trying to create it right within my courses. For the scoring method, I'm going to head, go ahead and choose custom points. I'm then going to click on levels and criteria. So you'll notice because it's a custom points, it puts point values in for every single column in here. So the next step in the method is I'm going to click on the criteria context menu and click edit criterion group. And what I'm going to do here is enter the levels, uh, the names of the level for each assessment and then I'm also going to enter the name of the criteria. Again since I have it laid out here I'm going to go ahead and just do a copy and paste into the level and I'll show you again and here I'm just going to do a copy and paste for each of the various criteria. Okay, so after I've copied and pasted all the levels and criteria, I click Save. So now the next step is I'm going to go and edit each of the levels. I click on the context menu next to the first level, and I click on Edit Level. I'm going to go ahead and put the custom point value in for each criteria. And again, because I have everything laid out here, I know what that is, 15, 25, 30, and 30. So this is one is going to be 15, this one is going to be 25, this one is going to be 30, and this one will be 30. So if the student gets this high level done and gets everything in this, they will have a 100% or 100 points, which is what this assignment is worth. The next step is I'm going to enter the descriptions. Again, having this everything mapped out nicely, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste. And I go to the next one and I copy and I paste. And I continue this for this level. When I have everything in there for the level and I can put custom feedback or feedback that's kind of generic for each one of these if I want. You click Save. 
And then what you want to do is repeat this process for each level. So I would go to the next level and click on Edit Level. I would put in the points and copy and paste the description. All right, so I get the last level copied and pasted and put in. I click Save. And you'll see that my rubric now is pretty much filled out. I have the different point values for each of the levels, different point values for each of the criteria. The last step in the process is I have to click on the context menu next to the overall score and click on Edit Levels. So in this particular case, I need to put the level name in again so it matches. And then I need to put the minimum score to achieve this level. Again, since I had everything spelled out, I know this is a 100 point assignment. I know that this is worth 100 points. So if they get 90 or more, that's going to be an A, that's going to be a B, that's my normal score. You have to figure out the math in all this, unfortunately. But once you do, you'll have a really good way of giving your students feedback. So in this particular case, this is 90. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste throughout for the next set of levels until I get it completely done. Once I have all the levels and the point values for those levels in, I go ahead and click Save. And now my rubric is complete. So once again, in order to make this process a more seamless one and an easier one, and spending the time up front in planning out your entire rubric, doing it in Word or whatever program you want, um, making sure you know the point values, you know the overall score, you know your criteria, will make this process a much quicker one. When you're all done, click Close.